I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at All Star Batman issue number two. Batman and Two Face are on the road trip from hell, with every villain trying to make a name for themselves and trying to get rich off their corpses. What'll happen next? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? All right. So as we join the comic once again, Scott Snyder is playing around with time in the chronology of events. We actually begin the story two days in the future. Jim Gordon and Harvey Bullock are set up outside Wayne Manor and they say that they plan to take down Bruce Wayne tonight. Now, back in the present, Batman is living every action hero's dream and that is having a fight on the back of a speeding train. Killer Croc has come to collect the massive reward for saving the life of Two-Face from Batman. Hmm, can we take this to mean after multiple stories in a row of Killer Croc actually being on the side of the angels that he's broken bad once more? Or does he just really, really want that money? As is becoming a theme for this story too, no villain works alone. Killer Croc, who is so often shown to be the muscle of operations, has brought his own muscle. In fact, he's brought two, King Shark and Amygdala. Shockingly, three dumb bruiser villains don't stand a chance against Batman any more than one bruiser villain did. Oh, but the would-be assassin cavalcade doesn't stop there, because next up to the plate, we have the lovely, the beautiful, the deadly Cheshire. Her game is to try and poison Batman, but wouldn't you know it, she's not alone either. She has backup in the form of Copperhead, the Lady Copperhead from the Arkham Origins video game, making her first canon appearance here in the comics. Being flanked on all sides by deadly women, Batman has no choice but to make a very improvised escape. Next time, maybe Batman should take the bus instead of the train, don't you think? Now, back in Gotham, Penguin, Great White Shark, and Black Mask, the three most powerful gang lords in all of the city, have decided to take matters into their own hands by hiring a professional assassin to off both Batman. Batman and Two-Face before they can do any more damage to their operations. For this, they turn to the very elusive KG Beast, a former joke of a villain who Scott Snyder has gone to great lengths to reimagine here. Once a cybernetically enhanced assassin for the Russian government, the way Snyder spins it, KG Beast has been doing jobs for the American government, and in exchange, they've upgraded his cybernetics even further. Beast agrees to take the contract, but only on the very specific condition that he's allowed to make this as loud and messy as he wants it to be. Issue 2 also makes some time for Alfred and Duke back in the Batcave. Duke has a lot of questions about why Two-Face is acting the way he is now. Alfred says that the reason most people haven't seen Two-Face like this is that Harvey Dent, or at least the Harvey Dent personality, always manifested with crazy two-themed crimes, you know, like Rob, the second national bank of Gotham at two o'clock for two million. This is the darker side of Two-Face that only Batman has ever really seen. Alfred also warns of the real danger of the shared memory between Two-Face and Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent knows Bruce Wayne is Batman, and if his other half were ever to make that connection, then in that case, all bets truly would be off. Now, Two-Face and Batman end up getting picked up by a crooked SWAT team who also want to claim the bounty. Granted, Two-Face, as unpredictable as ever, flips a coin and decides to shoot one of them because, hey, that's just sort of what you do. As the comic winds down, however, the SWAT convoy comes under attack by KG Beast. Hmm, it looks like if Batman and Two-Face want to get out of this one, they might very well have to work together before all of this is over. All-Star Batman number two was yet another issue that pushed my buttons in all the right ways. I love the rollout of DNC-list supervillains all trying to make a name for themselves. I love that we're seeing a story that's kind of out of order and they have a heck of a carrot dangling in front of us now of Gordon and Batman supposedly coming to blows. I mean, obviously I don't think it's going to go that way, but still all the same. Heck, this is also probably the most excited I've ever been to see Kate beast in anything, and what should that tell you? Once again, John Romita Jr.'s art does not fail to impress. It's gritty, it's visceral, it's grungy, but with beautiful colors all at the same time. Overall, I gotta give this one another strong 9 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you wanna like or subscribe. And if you wanna support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please Please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.